hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you are doing awesome. You know, I forgot to bring some water in here. May have to go get some in a minute. Okay, well, this the words for today are respect authority. And I think that it is a very important subject. I'm seeing if I can get music. I may have to go get me some water. We have no electricity right now. And so if things look a little weird, you know, color wise, that's why. Um, I don't know whether anybody in our town doesn't have electricity. I don't know. I don't know why I can't get my list that I have downloaded to this phone, but it won't do it anymore. I have no data on this phone, so I'm just going to turn it off. And if Facebook stops, it's because I didn't realize we were going to have a power outage, so my phone was practically down to hardly nothing. And I may switch it out and charge it on my computer, but my computer doesn't hold a real good charge either. All right, I'm going to go get me some water, and I will be right back. So sorry, I just um, felt like I needed some water. Okay, so I want to talk to you about respecting authority or respect authority. I can't remember, I think I did it respect authority in question marks because I want to go back to the beginning of where our real authority comes from this is our real authority God God is the real authority 
God is the top authority over all. So I think that's kind of the problem that we see with a lack of respect for authority is that people don't respect the top authority. And so it's just kind of a trickle down thing. But I'm going to do this out of the Bible because I don't want my videos to get um, cut. Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray. Let's jump into some prayer. I forgot my rings. It's been a crazy afternoon, but I got dinner cooked before the electricity went off. So that's a good thing since we are all electric here at my house. So that was a good thing. Okay, God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God. We thank you that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. And thank you for your perfect timing. If my electricity had to go off, would want it to go off right after I cooked dinner. Not when I had raw chicken on the stove. So as always, God, your timing is always perfect. And your will is always perfect. And we just thank you, God. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our... Um, shelter in the storm God you are always there you are a constant God you are the righteous judge you cannot be bought you cannot be um, compromised you cannot be threatened God and you see all things and you will exact your judgment on the unrighteous Again, at your perfect will and your perfect timing. God, you are a magnificent and powerful and mighty, but yet you are kind and compassionate and loving and patient. You are a faithful God. You, are, um, you keep all your promises, God, and all your prophecies will be fulfilled. God, we just thank you for calling us as your children, for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we pray for the lost, God. We just cry out for them. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home. And we pray, God, for... Um, we pray for all the disasters that are going on, all the wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes, volcano eruptions, um, flooding, just all the many things, the storms. Um, we're supposed to get rain for the next three days. I just haven't really checked the weather to see what the storms are doing, so please protect us, God. Please put your hedge of protection around us. We pray also, God, for all the people that have lost loved ones. There's just been so many people, even in my community, that have passed away. In our church family, God, we just pray that you would be with these families. You would give them peace, comfort, and strength. And be with us too, God. Give us peace, comfort, and strength. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so I didn't write it down, but I want to go back to creation. And this may not be very long, because like I said, my phone may die. It was holding at 11%. Oh, it's at 12 now, so that's good. All right, so let's go back to Genesis, and let's, let's read about the authority of God. Because there's nobody in this world that could create this world from nothing except for God. So let's read. Let's read how God created things with great authority. He spoke them into existence. So let's, let's begin there. In the beginning, God created. So this is Genesis 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. So there was no earth in the beginning. You know, God created it. Um, 
And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So out of no light, out of total darkness, God said, Let there be light. I don't have that authority, or I would say that right now. Um, I don't have that authority, or I'd get my lights turned back on. <clears throat> but God has the authority to speak light into existence where no light was before. And God saw the light, light and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So this is where light came in, right here at the beginning is where light came in to the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So that's what God did on the first day. That is what God created on the first day of creation. He created um, light. He divided the light from the darkness. And he gave, he gave them a name. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. So God, um, on the second day, created heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day so God created a firmament which divided the waters so I guess maybe there was just a lot of water and darkness before creation and God said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so now that's interesting because he the fruit trees do have the seed within themselves like the peach tree has a seed you know inside um, the apple tree has seeds well, that kind of stood out to me I, I've read this a million times okay um, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Oh, I don't know, my phone made a weird noise. Um, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also. And so that's when he made the sun and the moon and all the stars. And God made two great lights. I already read that. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. 
And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales in every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So that's what God did on the fifth day. This, this God of authority that spoke all these things into existence. He didn't go to a lab and create things like scientists do. He just spoke it into his existence. You know, what authority that he, um, he has over everything. You know, he is the top authority of everything. Okay, let's see where we are here. Uh, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving... Oh, I think I already read that. Mm, yes, I did. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind... And God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image. So why do you think he says, let us? Why do you think? Because it doesn't say anything about anybody else except for maybe the spirit being there. Uh, moving over the waters. But right here it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth well one reason why jesus is called the alpha and the omega is because jesus was here at creation with god and that's why he is at the beginning and he is at the end. He is over here in Revelation too. He is all throughout the Bible, all throughout God's word. Jesus is there. So God created man in his own image and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth and god said behold i have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of the tree of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening of the morning were the sixth day. And so, moving on to chapter 2, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it, he rested. He had rested from all his work which God created and made. Okay, and I'm going to quit there. This is why we respect God as authority. Because he created us. He created us. He created us. Not so we can be happy and have material things and, you know... 
nice things are nice, but that's really not what life is about. You know, he created us to fulfill his plan and purpose. That is why he created us. I need to, like, move my computer back down a little bit. Sorry. I'm just not quite ready for today, I guess. A little power outage kind of threw me. Okay. So create, God created us for him. So we need to respect him above everything and everyone. We need to respect God. God is that supreme authority that we need to have respect for. So I just, I don't know, I felt compelled to go to creation and just to show what authority God has, that all he has to do is speak things in existence. He doesn't have to create things. He has to, he just speaks them, and they're so. Okay, and you saw, I said, let there be light, and my electricity didn't come back on, so I don't have any of that authority. All kidding aside, I have none of that authority. Okay, so let's read some things in the Bible that I found, too, about respecting authority. Um, I did write down authority in creation, so I'm glad I went over and read the creation story. Okay, so what brought this to my attention this morning was reading Proverbs 29.2 in my um, quiet time. You know, Proverbs has some great advice for life. Some of it is hard to understand, but some of it is just cut and dried, and it's just really easy. So this is what I read today, and not just today. I read that I have read this before. Um, like this week, I have read it before. So, um... Uh, Proverbs 29 2 says when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice but when the wicked beareth rule the people mourn and I think that's what we're seeing right now we don't have righteous in authority I'm not going to go into detail but most people that come to my channel would believe, I mean, would agree with me that we don't have righteousness in authority right now. We do in pockets. We do in the churches and in some places. And thank God my state, because if I lived somewhere else where it was really, really bad, then I don't know what I would do. I'd probably move to Texas. Anyway, so... We, the people are happy when righteous people are in control. And right now, we don't have that. We have a lot of corruption. We have a lot of corruption right now. I have people messaging me. Okay, so let's read Luke. Let's read Let's read Matthew 21:23 which is talking about the authority of Jesus. Because Jesus has the authority of God. So Matthew 21 and 23 And so this is Jesus talking. I'm going to start in 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. 
in all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Okay, so they're questioning Jesus. Where'd you get your authority? What are you doing saying these things of God's word? Who gave you the authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if ye tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. I'm sorry I'm laughing, but I, I have a, a vision of a promise scene in my head whenever I read this, and it's just so funny. And he said unto them, Neither tell I by neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man okay, well he's gonna start with a story. But God gave Jesus the authority to do the things that he did. And uh it is in the Bible a lot. Um, in Matthew 7, 29, it says this. Oh, that's 26. Okay, verse 27. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew. And Okay, well he was telling the story about the, the wise man, the wise man and the foolish man. And um, how they built their house. And we talked about that one day, that we need to build our, build our houses on the rock, which is Jesus. And, um, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished to his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. So Jesus taught with authority. Seems like it got darker in here. I guess it's getting darker outside. Okay. Okay, we already read that. Okay, let's read John five twenty seven. And then I want to talk to you about some generalities of respect for authority that um I'm not going to get in very deep because I like to keep my videos up. Okay, John 5, 27 says this. Um, verily, well, actually this is 25. John 5, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. And marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. 
I can of mine own self do nothing as I hear. I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father with which hath sent me. The supreme authority. He seeks the will of the supreme authority. So, God is the authority. The Son has the authority also. Okay, let me see what Mark... I wrote some more things down. Mark one let Let's see what this is. It is really getting dark in here. <laughs> I'm not scared or anything. It's just that it's getting dark in this room. It wasn't too dark a while ago. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. So see, Jesus had the authority, the supreme authority of God, uh, through God. So let's look at 1 Timothy 3.15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Now that was the scripture that I put the picture up with, which was about respecting God, respecting God's house, and respecting um, God's truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, and believed on in the world, received up into glory. So Jesus was God in the flesh. Okay, well let's move to Revelation and show the final authority what the final authority is going to be. So 13.2 says this, And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power in his seat and great authority. So, the Antichrist is going to have authority too, but his authority does not come from God. His authority comes from um, the evil one, the deceiver of the people, the father of lies. That is where his authority comes from. But his authority is nothing compared to the authority of God. And so at the end of Revelation, which is the best part of Revelation, it shows. It shows who has all the true authority, and it's God. From the beginning to the end, God has the authority. All through here, when God was dealing with um, the Israelites, he had the authority. Jesus came, was the authority here on earth. So this is our ultimate authority. So we need to respect it. If, if we love God, we will respect Him. So God tells us to love others. So if we love others, we must respect them also. So what is going on with the amount of disrespect for authority? My theory is it starts right here. If it's not learned here, then it's not going to be extended through to um, parents. It's not going to be extended through to teachers. It's not going to be extended through to the police. It's not going to be extended through to, if you're in the military, your uh, officers that are over you. It starts with God's word. It starts with believing that God is that supreme authority, that we must respect God. We must love God. We must respect Him. 
And Jesus calls us to love others as we love ourselves. Well, if we love others, we must respect others too. And that means that sometimes we don't have to agree with somebody all the time. And if we don't agree with them, we can still be friends. And we can still, um, we don't have to shun people. We don't have to cancel people because they don't believe the same things we believe. You know, we are called to love everyone. We are called to love sinners the same as saints. We are called to love. You know, God called us to love, and He is our supreme authority. So if we are following our supreme authority, we are going to love others. Now, this is what it doesn't mean. God does not want us to meet, to, to love sinners so much that we are partaking in their sin because it's still sin and he still God does not like sin sin is an abomination the smallest sin to the biggest sin to God is the very same and it's an abomination to him and it is unrighteousness and he doesn't like it but we don't have to live in our sins we can repent we can ask for forgiveness and we don't have to live there just like last night Love lifted me. Love lifted me out of a miry clay. And I have not ever looked back. I have not. I have just kept moving with Jesus. Kept learning with Jesus. Sometimes it was really slow. Sometimes I was crawling. But you know what? I continued. I continued on the path with Jesus. Okay, well, I think that that is all the verses that we're going to look at tonight. But this is, God is our supreme authority from creation to the end. The same God, the same God that hated the sin in the Old Testament, hates the sin in the New Testament. And right now, you know, you can't convince me that just because people are more tolerant, that God has changed because he never changes. He never changes. Okay, well let's let's read. It's hard to read in here because um, this is pink. This is pink ink. So it's hard to read. My purple pen ran out of ink so I had to go to the next color. Okay. So this was my conversation with God where we talked about respect and uh, I'm going to talk about some generalities of respect too in a minute. So good morning God, good morning child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings of new opportunities to share my truths and the gospel of Jesus. A new day child put before you to make better choices, better food choices than yesterday. Yes, I did horrible yesterday. I never did even fast. I was eating crackers last night after I got through with this. I was, I like to fast. I like to fast from dinner until noon the next day. I like to do that. That fits really well with my lifestyle. I don't like eating breakfast. Breakfast makes me want to eat all day long. Okay, to show more discipline. I showed some more discipline today. Um, I'm not really hungry, so I don't see me eating after I get through with this. Thank you, God, for another day of mercies and blessings, new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. Thank you for new opportunities to make better food choices today and have, and have more discipline. Thank you for all of my blessings, God. And he said, child, there is a huge problem of people of all races not being taught to respect authority, starting with me and trickling down to teachers, parents, to, to teachers. Parents are not teaching this in home. Children are being taught by the world view. And the world view is not to respect authority. So I see that. I see that parents are not teaching their kids to respect authority. And I see that parents are not modeling. So we have to set that example. 
We have to set that example of how we treat people. Our kids watch. They watch how we treat people. And if we treat people disrespectfully, our kids are going to treat people disrespectfully. So it starts with us. It starts with our example. What example do you want for your kids? What are you going to teach your kids? Are you going to teach your kids to uh, respect authority? Then you need to model respecting authority to others. Just do. Even people in the store, you know, that make you angry, um, you know, because they're scanning your stuff really slow. You know, we don't know what they're going through. And we just need to treat everyone with respect. Okay. Um, the worldview is not to respect authority. It is a huge problem. Everyone wants to do what they want to do, no matter if it is lawful or not. That's so true. People are out there breaking the laws, right and left. They're not keeping the laws of God, and they're not keeping the laws of the land either. So that is so true. Laws keep order, and my children have been taught to keep my laws and man's laws, and we have. Um, we keep God's laws, and we keep man's laws, which came from my laws. A lot of our laws that we have, our man's laws of the land, came from God's law. I've learned that lately. I've been listening to somebody. Who's a Christian that knows my hair is just I'm sorry that my hair looks so horrible tonight okay well back to this this is more important the chaos comes when people think they are better than the law or above it too now that is true I see that a lot I see a lot of corruption in our government entities that people think they are above the law that the law is not for them. The law is for us. It's not for them. Well, the law is for everyone. The law is for everyone. Um, the chaos comes... Uh, I already read that. This is where corruption begins. When people think they are better or above the law, the law is for others, but not for me. I am no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of persons. God loves me no more than he loves the worst sinner, which God sin is sin. Um, he is no respecter of persons. He loves us all the same. Uh, and love all my created people which he created we read about that he created Adam and Eve of course he had to destroy the world too because of a lot of sinful stuff that is going on right now um, this is a huge problem all over the world generations have no respect for authority they don't they do not have respect for authority I see that all the time even working with the younger generations, they do not respect authority. They have not been taught how to respect authority. They have not been modeled how to respect authority. And their parents may not have been modeled. Somebody might not have set that example for them too. So people will not comply with what they do not respect and they do not view authority as the protector that it is. Authority is our protector. God's authority is our protector. So God's laws, the things that God tells us not to do, is to protect us. It's not to, oh, God doesn't want me to have any fun. It's to protect you. It is a protection. 
and men's laws as a protector to them but people wait a minute my children see my laws and man's law as a protector to them but people that do not respect me will not respect others people have been taught to hate those they disrespect and disagree with also what you see is an agenda of the evil one to do away with all good and I see that too I see that uh, I wonder how much battery I have on this phone oh, I've got 14% it sure is dark though I think it's just dark in this room maybe my little oh my flashlight is dimming it was real bright okay well, we're not gonna be on here for long we're probably gonna do a really short salvation message okay I just think this is so good what God had to say this morning about this which is in his word I mean it's not that this is not in his word okay the next okay the next force to come will be so much less kind so if we have a federal law enforcement they will be so much less kind. Um, they will wish they could have friendly authority back. But the ones on the streets will be used for the evil agenda to move forward. Them, then their usefulness will end. If they can't be controlled, they will be used as an example to others to comply. It is a vicious cycle of evil and to remove freedom. People are only free through salvation in my son Jesus. If you love all, if you love all, then you are free from the deception. of the evil one sadly many are deceived by his lies and his followers lies too when god all of when all of these things become so much clearer i said wow god all of these things become so much clearer now i don't know my friend is texting me so much clearer now i see all of this well i don't know i hope all of this in your i see all of this in your word and unfolding too it makes me sad to see the young generations buy into all of the lies put before them oh let there be light <laughs> yay well, I just got electricity. That will make anyone smile. Okay. Oh, my dishwasher was on. I didn't know that. Okay, all I know to do is pray and stay on the path with Jesus. I can't keep up with all the shootings and chaos. There is so much going on. I can't keep up with any anymore, and I'm just not even going to try. I'm just not. I'm just going to pray. I'm going to pray, and I am going to stay with Jesus and this is it's getting pretty out of hand and i'm just thankful where i live it is a lot and i believe it is only going to get worse until jesus comes i trust your plans and purposes alone and not man's at all your will be done god in your perfect timing i will walk in righteousness and obedience until Jesus comes. Thank you for meeting me today, God. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. And he said, I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient in all I ask. Keep walking with Jesus and sharing my truths and the gospel of Jesus. Be ready for the reunion, child. It is soon. It is soon. 
<laughs> Consider what you are doing is a diary for the left behind. The reunion will be so beautiful, child, so be ready at any time. All joy, love, peace here. Beautiful beyond imagination. And I said, Maranatha, God. So I want to read one more thing that I, re I wrote on here. And I think this was in my daily devotional, too, out of Revelation. And thank goodness I have electricity again. And so hopefully the internet will come back on in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to start with Revelation 21, 22. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth to bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall no more night be. Sorry, I lost my spot. Um, and they shall bring the glory of honor. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, Ariel, but I'm busy. I'll call you back in a minute. All right, sorry about that. I got a phone call in the middle. Um, into it, anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So we want to have our name written in the Lamb's book of life. That is what we want. That is what we want. We want our name written in the Lamb's book of life. So, I can't, I can't take your phone call right now. I can't take your phone call. I'm so sorry. All right, that's one of my youth girls calling me. Okay. So um, let's do this really, really quick. Um, what is the quickest thing? Okay. This is the quickest salvation message. Okay. Do you know the ABCs of life? God created you to experience a full life here on earth, John 10.10, 10, and he wants you to spend eternity with him, 2 Peter 3.9. To become a Christian, you simply need to admit you need a Savior. We've all disobeyed God, sinned, and earned separation from God, which is death. Romans 3.23, 6.23, no matter how good you are or how hard you try, you can't work your way into heaven, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Believe in Jesus Christ, that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life, John three sixteen. Commit your life to Christ. You can believe in your mind that Jesus exists, but to have a relationship with him, you must ask him to be your Lord here on earth and your Savior eternally. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this is just a very short uh, prayer. Jesus, I have sinned. Thank you for dying for me so I could be forgiven. I trust you alone for eternal life. In your name I pray. Amen. So if you said that prayer, it's not the prayer that saves you. It is the belief in Jesus Christ and who he is. And what God sent him to do. So if you did that, then uh, welcome to the kingdom family of God. Um, the angels are rejoicing and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm going to have to get off of here because people are contacting me. And I don't know what they're contacting me about. So um, I'm going to pray real quick. God, we just pray. We just praise you, God, because you are the supreme authority. We trust you with all that we have, God. 
we um, we are so thankful that you are our everlasting Father. God, we just pray. We pray for the storms right now. I don't know why people are calling me. I have a feeling that's it. Anyway, um, just uh, watch over us and protect us in these storms, God. And bless us with a good day tomorrow. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry, that was a short prayer. Um, much love and cyber hugs uh, until I see you again. Good night.